hope the feeling the off-season versus pre-contest as well, the relationships and stuff. Be mindful that pre-contest a lot of time, many of us turn into arseholes, so prepare yourself for that. Especially as you get closer to the show, there might be the introduction of some, you know, AIs. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. At Kojo's, done a bit of shoulders and doing a little touch up on triceps as we speak. Done a few sets on the old uh, the Vulcan push down. So, I thought it was a good time to do some, well, do a video because it's nice and quiet today. I've replaced it myself. I did film yesterday in a place called the Cozy Club, which is a really nice like, breakfast place, but my microphone was picking up all sorts of sounds. So, I thought, okay, we'll get to Kojo's tomorrow and have some peace and quiet. And uh, the topic that I was trying to go into yesterday was the difference between the pre-contest and off-season uh, setting. Many things remain the same and consistent between both, but many things will change depending on, well, depending on you. If there's still progress in terms of muscularity that you're trying to gain in the crossover period between an off-season and the pre-contest. If you've had a really successful off-season, then you probably won't need that at all and you can just go into the diet the sole purpose of sustaining the amount of muscle you've acquired over the off-season. So off-season, obviously it's a time where you aim to put on muscle. How do you do that? Calories, food. You ain't gonna be able to accumulate any new tissue on your body without ingesting something else, raw materials. You know, you can't build a house without bricks and you certainly can't build a body without protein. Nice high protein intake to you know, accommodate the muscle that, you, not only you have, the muscle that you're trying to put on. Because let's say you're 270 pounds of lean weight, but you want to be 280 pounds of lean weight, you have to eat like you're going to be 280 pounds. So that means protein consumption will have to be certainly lifted to a degree from pre-contest into your off-season. Carbohydrates in the off-season are typically higher than pre-contest. Why is that? Again, for calories, for energy balance and just for overall consumption in order to put on weight. When you're heavier and you train, that in itself forces adaption in the gym. Because you can be strong and not weigh much, but when you're heavy and you're trying to move around and lift, if your body gets used to that, then you'll acclim acclimate to that and it will actually show in your muscularity. So activity in the off-season versus pre-contest. I would say, you know, typically for me in the off-season, cardiovascular activity is still present but often lower in total than pre-contest because you're not trying to burn too many calories because like I previously said, you're trying to allow for the calories to go a long way and you know, do their job. We did a podcast last night with my friends and we'd done like this really deep chat for like about an hour. And then my friend Amph Bay was a pro bodybuilder from the UK. I was like, boys, I haven't pressed record. <laughs> ah, so we had to do it all again. It never comes out as good the second time. Off season with your, regards to you keeping an eye on what you're doing, you can be just as anal um, with your approach as pre-contest. You can weigh yourself often, you can take pictures often, you can do check-ins often, and I would advise it. I think the more on point you are throughout the off season, the easier a prep will be. So it's not a time to be like, oh, off season means I can be off, like slack. If anything, treat it just the same. Obviously anabolics, Supplementation would be very varied in the off-season. I personally try to keep the range of my anabolics far more limited and simple. When you're in a pre-contest, there are a lot more compounds that normally get thrown in the mix. A lot more cocktails, your trembolones, your masterons, uh, your winstrols, even down to your fat burning assistants like clenbutrols and thyroxines. In the off-season, it's nice because you don't have to have all those in place. Typically, you won't find yourself having to administer anabolics as often, especially if you're using like long esters and you get away with infre less frequent, more infrequent shots. So that's a pain in the ass with pre-contest because you find yourself having to rotate injection sites and just finding new places to go and you're like, well, I'm trying to do it in a safe manner and not injure myself. <laughs> so that becomes a bit of a problem and I definitely advise if you are doing that that you have someone who helps you because you're gonna have to go into some funky places. So with the training itself, I would say it should, it should be just as uh, intense. There will be periods in the off season where you should back off, and that's, you know, periodic, structured rest times. You can call these deloads, you can call them 
you know, you have time off to refresh, like you have multiple ways of approaching that when the time comes. A lot of people like to do what you call a deload, which would be you still go in the gym and train, but let's say you take all your output and you reduce it by a certain percentage so that the overall work is less. And that could be you reduce the weight or you reduce the amount of sets and basically don't spend so much time in the gym and give your body a little bit of a chance to recover from the stresses that are training. So off season in terms of like internally, like how do you feel? Like beyond on paper, what is the difference? You feel awful. When you're pushing for new body weight, like me a few weeks ago, I was at my heaviest. I've come down a little bit now, um, just from cleaning things up. When you're pushing for that extra weight, I'm sure Evan would tell you because he's been very, very heavy. It's not comfortable, man. Your body's telling you, don't do this. Your mind's telling you, don't do this. Uh, and for a reason. <laughs> so you find yourselves having to um, go against the instinct itself. And that's where it becomes quite difficult in your season. Do you get that pre-contest? Yeah, you will, because you'll be tired and you'll be lethargic from you know less calories in the pre-contest kind of environment. But typically in a pre-contest, you have so many tools in your, you know, in your arsenal that will help you with energy levels, you know, these stimulants and stuff, that you can kind of ride through. And also when you're pre-contest, the chase and the desire for the show and seeing yourself transform and how you look on a weekly basis and it coming rapidly, it, it makes it easier to follow the carrot and not get off put, you know. In the off season, you're kind of getting heavier, somewhat fatter, you don't like looking at yourself. It's very easy to feel like I don't want to do this. Posing in the off season becomes very difficult. You need to stay on top of that. If you're trying to uh, be a very good bodybuilder and you actually do care about bodybuilding, then posing is something that should be happening all year round, whether you like it or not. One thing I find with myself that's probably beneficial for you to hear is that in the off season, if you can book in with you know soft tissue work, physiotherapists, people of that nature, keep on top of your flexibility and your mobility, then again, you're giving yourself far more of an easy, smooth run when it comes to the pre-contest. Mobility does suffer, obviously, when you get heavier and if you stay untreated. So it's, it's down to you like, to be the master and stay on top of things like that. How does the food differ? Food choices are usually pretty much the same. You know, what you're eating in the off season can be carried over into the pre-contest. Just the amounts would come down. As I said before, off season, you're really pushing the calories up. Pre-contest, you're trying to bring everything down slowly. It's just so you're in a deficit, so that it allows for fat loss to occur. You don't want to be too much in a deficit that you start to have bad performance in the gym or muscle wastage, which can happen. And it has happened to a lot of us because it's hard. It's not so easy to exactly guesstimate or estimate what calories, what amount in specific terms is enough for you to train hard, but also to lose fat, but not lose muscle. And um, one thing you can do to do that is actually get into the pre-contest. You have to be very, very sensible with your output in the gym. You don't want to do too much, but you don't want to do too little. So it's definitely worth like logging your training. You might find yourself getting too close to the show and actually pulling back on the amount of load you do and the amount of work you do. If you're someone that feels like your muscle needs to be protected, then you know what was once three sets might become two, even one on an exercise as you get closer to the show. And that's just down to you, your coach, whoever's making the decisions to make that call. You'll probably find by the time you're close to a show, activity levels are pretty high outside the gym, just like moving around because a lot of people, and me included, I think, moving around using like a pedometer or step counter is a great way to burn calories without having to do direct cardio. Obviously direct cardio works, and I do believe in it, and I do do it myself. I do half an hour a day. But I think for the amount of activity you'd need in order to do enough, it would be pretty boring because you'd have to be on a treadmill quite a lot. Plus, you know, moving around is low impact. You don't almost know it's happening, but it's a great way to burn fat without being too intrusive. If you're someone that has to do a lot of cardio, what might happen, and it does happen to a lot of people, they tend to feel like their legs start to fade in a pre-contest. So your best option really, if you're someone that feels like that, is to split your cardio with steps. Many friends of mine who are pro bodybuilders as well do that to avoid that because they've had that issue occur. What else is there to discuss? There's so much stuff to discuss. Like I will sit in one of these chats and I'll talk to you guys and I'll, I'll ramble on for a good 10, 15 minutes. And then when I finish recording, I'll be like, I forgot to say that. <laughs> That's always a bummer.
Um, how are you going to feel in the off-season versus pre-contest as well, with relationships and stuff? Be mindful that pre-contest, a lot of the time, many of us turn into arseholes. So prepare yourself for that. Especially as you get closer to show, there might be the introduction of some, you know, AIs, anti estrogens AI inhibitors, anti-estrogen um, inhibitors. And they can have quite a strong effect on how you feel. They almost make you not feel. You can become quite cold. So bear that in mind if you're in a relationship and it's a good one and try to like pre-warn and just say that I might be a little bit up, like off, a little bit cold. So just bear with me because I promise it's not me, it's the process. <laughs> so do I prefer pre-contest or do I prefer off-season? Honestly, I prefer whatever one I'm doing for a few weeks and then by the time I'm a few weeks in, I'm like, fuck this. I'm kind of itching to get lean now and I'm just hoping that there's a bit more muscle than I had before. I am running a little bit flat today. Last few days I've had a lot of work to do in the gym, moving stuff around, so I notice it with my body. But hey, once the ball's rolling, the engines are roaring, I think I'll be pretty good. Our next topic of discussion will be to do exercise. So there'll be some tutorials in here, or possibly in my gym, form. We'll go through some things on form. And um, I'm not a big believer in saying that you should and you have to train a certain way. But there are certain things that I think will be helpful that I can say. So, massive, massive thank you for you hanging around for a few minutes with me in uh, Kojo's gym, which is uh, Jordan and Corinne's private gym. Uh, I hope to see many of you at mine and Jordan's gym when it's open. Please subscribe to the AMA, share the video if you enjoyed it. Um, hopefully there's some little gems in here that are helpful. And if in response to this video, it raises questions and things you want to ask that are a little bit more direct or in depth, Please feel free, because that's the whole point of these videos being on YouTube, because YouTube's such an easy place to respond. So, uh, yeah, from myself, Lonely, Lonely James, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace, love, respect, look after your health, and I'll see you in a bit.